headquarters. I'm Chief Brown, of course, and it's nice to have you all here for a good law-abiding reason. <laughs> I'd like to first recognize uh, the elected officials that are all here. First, Mayor Mike Rollins, Mayor Pro Team Pauline Madrano, Councilmember Sheffy Cadane, Councilmember Carolyn Davis, District Attorney Craig Watkins, and I saw former Councilmember Alan Wan somewhere. There you go, behind the camera. Very good place to be, actually. <laughs> Thank you all for being here in support of this great cause. Now I would like to turn it over to the, the brains and the beauty of this great partnership uh, and the reason we're all here today, together today. Ms. Tony Brinker. Tony, please. I'm, I'm a little shorter. Can you hear? All right. Huh? This one? How about that? This is the uh, bad thing of being five foot three, I can assure you. All right. First of all, uh, Chief Brown, thank you. I appreciate it. I also appreciate all the support that you've given me over the past year. So good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Tony Brinker. I wanted to thank you for being here today. Before we begin our program, though, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful group of individuals standing before you. Many of them don't need any introduction, but if you will please give me uh, a little bit of leeway on that. Uh, we've got to my right Brent Christopher, who's president and CEO of Communities Foundation of Texas, and standing next to him, Carolyn, Carolyn Newman. She is director of fund administration um, Bill Hall is somewhere. Oh, there you are, Bill. Bill Hall, who is CEO of Dallas Area Habitat, Dream Dallas. And Melissa Cameron, who is Vice President of Development. Of course, we have Chief Brown, our Chief of Police, and uh, Assistant David Blankenbaker. The uh, Mayor Mike Rawlings, our incredible Mayor of the City of Dallas, and his Chief of Staff is Somewhere here, Sean Williams. Okay. <laughs> Charles Terrell, founder and visionary of Safer Dallas, Better Dallas. And Jack Hamrick is in the audience somewhere. There he is. And we've also got the president of Safer Dallas, Better Dallas, which is Gary Griffith. And he'd be to the far left. I'd like for you to know that this group has invited you here today to announce the formation of a strategic collaborative partnership between four, even though it looks like five, very, very dedicated organizations. Our partnership, which we are launching today, is called Economic Partners Investing in Communities. And we refer to it as EPIC. And for this particular news media conference, I will refer to it as EPIC Dallas. I'm going to start by giving you a little background information because I want you to know how EPIC began. I want you to understand what our beliefs are. And I also want you to know how we are going to work together. I'll start by telling you, first of all, that about a year and a half ago, I joined the Advisory Council for Dallas Habitat Dream Dallas Campaign. And there are a number of people on that committee, and I'm going to assure you that every member on that council is fully aware that safe and economically viable neighborhoods do not happen overnight. We on that council are keenly aware that safe and economically sustainable neighborhoods only happen when people living and working in those neighborhoods have a sense of security. That sense of security, if you will allow me to say this, allows a family to become more productive and happy. And that includes families just like yours and mine. And when people become content with their daily lives, they have the courage to pursue their dreams 
and in, from my perspective, they have the courage to pursue their American dream. Public safety is a critical component in that dream, and it affects every citizen in every neighborhood in this great city. And that means every neighborhood in North Dallas, South Dallas, West Dallas, and East Dallas. In January 2012, our advisory council took a tour of the Fusion Center at the Dallas Police Department. That tour and our subsequent conversations with Chief Brown, his chief of chat, staff, the assistant chiefs, and the departmental heads clearly showed that there could be a collaborative partnership between Dallas Habitat, Dream Dallas, the Dallas Police Department, and another organization committed to supporting Chief Brown's citywide goals and objectives of keeping our city safe, and that organization is Safer Dallas, Better Dallas. While the Advisory Council at Habitat was exploring how these three organizations could best work together, Mayor Rawlings announced his Grow South initiative. In his presentation, our group, we saw a connection between Dallas Habitat, Dream Dallas, the neighborhoods that we support, the police department, Safer Dallas, Better Dallas, and several of the focused areas of Mayor Rawlings' Grow South initiative, primarily neighborhood revitalization, stabilization, and also his very strong emphasis on economic development. The conclusion of all of our uh, meetings and our collective wisdom is that we would be mighty foolish if we did not collect, excuse me, if we did not capitalize on the collective strengths of these incredibly dedicated organizations. In essence, and at that point in time, this partnership began to fall in place. As for our final partner under EPIC, in Dallas, when you start a philanthropic partnership, there's one organization and one person that you need to reach out to, and that's Communities Foundation of Texas and Brent Christopher. Fortunately for us, Brent liked the idea of collaboration and he agreed to get involved. And at that point, ladies and gentlemen, EPIC was underway. Now, what are our beliefs? It's EPIC's firm belief that the fabric and future of any city is defined by the people, the local government, and the community organizations who work, live, and strive to make their city better. It is also EPIC's belief that by leveraging the power of collaboration and effective collaboration, that EPIC Dallas can and will have a transformative effect on increased public safety and access to home ownership opportunities. We know that increased public safety and accessibility to home ownership opportunities lead to neighborhood revitalization and neighborhood stabilization. And again, please understand this is applicable no matter where you live in Dallas. Increased public safety, neighborhood revitalization, stabilization initiatives, they encourage job creating investments and they lead to long term economic development opportunities in great and prosperous cities like Dallas, Texas. How will we work? How will EPIC work? Every partner in the organization will support the ongoing development efforts of the other partners. We will attend events together, we will market our common goals, and we will be advocates for the relationship between public safety, access to home ownership opportunities, and again, long-term economic development. Very much what the mayor has been espousing for quite some time. 
we will maintain regular and open dialogues with each organization and we will address and see how we can best work together. A good example is Mill City, where Dal uh, Dallas Habitat, Dream Dallas, and Safer Dallas, Better Dallas have already decided to utilize their respective strengths and what I call boots on the ground information how we, uh, on how we can best serve the current and future residents and citizens in that neighborhood. We think, we EPIC, think that this collaborative effort can be applied across Dallas. As an example, West Dallas, Five Points, Vickery and Meadow, Lancaster Corridor, LBJ and Josie Lane, and areas in Northwest Dallas. By focusing our efforts citywide, where we have resources to collaborate, we feel we can make a huge difference in the overall impact of EPIC. Thirdly, I will tell you that we will fundraise together and we will fundraise separately. We emphatically believe in the power of collaboration because our partners believe that by doing that is just good sound business. So you've kind of gone back through how we've begun, what our beliefs are, and how we will work together. The success of EPIC depends on dedication and support of the leaders throughout the community who understand this power of collaboration. I'd like to introduce a couple of the individuals who understand our cause and who have agreed to serve on our steering committee. Many of these steering committee members are here today, a few are not, but I'm going to read the names in toto and ask those that are here to please stand up and if you would hold your applause because they, they deserve it until they're all standing. On our committee we have Albert Black, Jorge Calderon, Fred Hagee, Vicki Ripito, Joan Wong, Clint Bruce, Adele Carruth, Don Moore, Pete Schenkel, and Donna Weitzman. Did I not say you? Ah! Frank, please stand up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so. Anyway, thank you. All right, at this time, I would like to invite each of the partners to come and share a few words. And I'm going to start with Bill Hall, who's president and CEO of Dallas Habitat. Thanks, Tony. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for Dallas Habitat, but an even better opportunity for the entire city. Uh, this morning, as I was getting up from breakfast and talking to my eight-year-old and five-year-old girls, and told them, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to be an announcement for Epic today, uh, they got all excited that they, I was going to take them to the new movie. And uh, <laughs> so, um, sadly, we're not announcing the movie, but we are announcing what I think is going to be important. At Habitat, we know that neighborhood uh, stabilization and neighborhood support requires a great deal of effort, and it's just not one organization getting the work done. Uh, we've been, for over 30 years, we've been building homes, tearing down homes. We've been uh, supporting neighborhood activities uh, through our partners and through our own work. And, and this is basically an extension because we know as we move forward, as a city, if we can't have strong neighborhoods and strong places where everyone can live safely and decently, that we're not going to be the strongest city and the most productive city we can be. So through what we, when we looked at the landscape, um, we decided that there were three core activities that had to happen. People had to feel secure. They had to have a decent place to live. And there needed to be economic development in those neighborhoods to create a, the, a, the strength and the glue to keep the neighborhood going for over a long period of time. So that's why you see the partners that are sitting here today. Uh, it, we are going to make a tremendous impact, and we have made, as individual partners, we've made a tremendous impact over the past 25 years or however long we've been uh, in our organization. But together, in the future, we're going to make a significant impact in the neighborhoods we serve and in this city to make it a better place for everyone to live. I want to uh, thank Ms. Brinker for her vision and leadership, understanding where we are and where we need to be and how we can get there. 
anyone that's in the nonprofit world knows things don't happen without somebody pushing from behind. And I want to thank you for that. And um, I would just kind of want to say, uh, to me, this is the way it's going to work in the future. One, in one of our focus neighborhoods, Mill City, we have a great partner with ICDC and Diane Ragsdale, and it's where uh, Ms. Davis, uh, Council, Councilwoman Davis, uh, is over. Would you like to come up and have something to say? No? Okay. So um, I, I think uh, I want to appreciate you guys for coming out today and listening to what we have to say, and I'd like to introduce Charles uh, Terrell with uh, Safer Dallas. Uh, this is a wonderful partnership that will help each of these organizations work better for the overall community. Uh, we're committed at Safer Dallas, Better Dallas to supporting Chief David Brown's goal to equip DPD with the necessary tools to attack the crime in 27 targeted area action grid areas across the city. This has been our main objective in the, la in the last year. The result of equipping these tag areas with the needed equipment will be an overall citywide crime reduction and more specifically a reduction in residential burglaries and thefts, business burglaries and thefts, and motor ve vehicle burglaries. These are the items that drive our crime rate up as they've reduced violent crime substantially. By being part of the EPIC partnership, we can work to promote comprehensive neighborhood revitalization with reduced crime and increased public safety as one aspect of a complete turnaround. Thank you, Tony and Chief Brown and Brent and Bill Hall for bringing Safer Dallas on board. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. At Communities Foundation of Texas, we have the opportunity to hear about many of the different charitable and philanthropic initiatives that are started in this city. One thing is always true, community needs are going to be greater than the amount of resources that we have to address them. And that means that it is critical to find the right leverage point when you're deploying those assets, to find something that will give you a multiplier effect so that you get the biggest bang for the buck and that you accomplish the most good. EPIC is certainly going to be unique in that regard. EPIC is taking four notable and proven organizations and aligning their work and priorities to capitalize on that leverage opportunity to make a greater impact on this city in a much shorter amount of time. For everyone who is involved, this is an incredibly uh, smart partnership that has the potential and capacity to change Dallas and help all of Dallas be a safer and more productive community, and we are proud to be a part of that. So on behalf of CFT, I just want to say thank you for letting us be a small part of what is going to be a very big idea. And with that, please join me in welcoming Mayor Mike Rawlings. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. As mayor, uh, there are a lot of people that call me and say, uh, can I have a meeting with you? Okay. It just happens. There's lots of ideas that are, that are thrown out, but very few of those callers say something like this. I have an idea that will promote your Grow South initiative and benefit the police department and help neighborhood revitalization all at once. That was a phone call that I got from Tony. And uh, about a year ago, we started sitting down and talking about this initiative. I think what it, one of the important insights of this was the thing that we've talked about thus far, and that is the importance of public safety. You know, I don't know if in college you studied that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, and, and at the basic was the need to feel safe, 
to be all they could be at the top, you had to start to feel safe. I'm proud of what we've done in this city over the last decade. Um, the city council has invested in our police department, make sure we've had them on the streets, and every year we're getting smarter and better on how we're deploying them. But we have parts of our city that need the economic development, and it won't get there unless those neighbors feel safe as well. And that's what's unique about this, this idea. How do we take the best of some very good organizations and then put them together and focus it on a very targeted part of this city? I think the end result will be that economic development, will be uh, lifestyles being better. And it really is the essence of why we launched Grow South. At the core is neighborhoods, is strong neighborhoods, and we wanted to make sure that we had it, and you can't have it without that safety. We've got some great uh, chodos uh, uh, in this town, Habitat being one of them. Uh, there are folks uh, that are building homes right now. There are a lot of homes coming up. And we've got to make sure that when citizens move in, they feel that way. I think that uh, ultimately, uh, this is a new way of doing business at the city. When we start to reach outside our span of control and partner with other things like Habitat with ICDC and, and, and the Better Dallas and Safer Dallas with economic development staff, you know, that's when this thing starts to happen. But we've got to create a virtual organization to be able to bring these issues to the table, raise the money appropriately, and then focus it on the effort. I think the result is going to be uh, a better Mill City. It's going to be a better neighborhood the next one we, we come to. And, and Chief, I hope this makes your job more effective and more productive. Chief David Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I think I'm here to introduce Gary Griffith. Well, Gary. no, but I, but I appreciate the introduction. I have a special announcement okay. that I wanted to make to you and to Chairman Brinker and to the mayor. Uh, Safer Dallas has been working in neighborhoods, as you know, and at your direction and suggestion and with the great support of our city council member, particularly our mayor, Pro Tem, Pauline Madrano, we have a check today from Safer Dallas, Better Dallas, which is from all the donors that have helped us, 7-Eleven, Bicker Meadow Improvement District, and many, many more. We're going to complete the funding for the first two tag areas, Ross, Bennett, and Bickery Meadow, and here's our check for $300,000. Wow. 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 Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much to all the donors. And I, I kind of hear the cynicism from some, maybe not in the room, but I hear it in whispers, the cynicism, that this is just a pipe dream, right? You can't get this done in Dallas. You know, Uptown was the most dangerous place in Dallas in the 1950s and 60s. Cops went to what was called Hall and State, four to a car. It was so dangerous. And look at it now. Now, police officers back in the 50s and 60s would like to take credit for Uptown. <laughs> Economic development is what changed Holland State to Uptown. This is not a pipe dream. This can get done in Dallas. I'm no urban planner. At the end of the day, I'm just an old school beat cop, like, right? Put them all in jail and let God sort them out. <laughs> but economic development is the smartest way to build our way out of crime in Dallas. And so this is not, this is not a pipe dream. This can get done. I just want to thank uh, Tony Brinker so much for this idea and the collaborative partnerships. I want to thank the mayor for his push for Grow South. Uh, the police department is 100% behind ensuring these neighborhoods are safe. And I also want to thank Mayor Pro Tem and council members here for all that you've done to support the police department. 
thank you so much, all the donors and the potential donors uh, for being on board with this and helping us. This can get done. Thank you.